I'm gonna have to speak extra loud for this part. It is the Aussie bush in the Aussie summer, and listen to that. A chorus of cicadas. It is so loud. I don't know if I'm gonna have to turn the volume down for you guys to be able to hear my voice without your ears or your speakers blowing out of the computer. But we've just picked up the world's fastest striking snake. He's in this bag ready to be released. I'll chuck a little clip in. I think it was always that. I think it was vertical. So it'll probably be a bit stretched out. But you can see this beautiful red faced death adder. He's laying in the garden and he's got his tail wrapped around with his little law sticking out. His lures next to his mouth. The homeowners actually saw him doing it. He was there and he was giving his law a wiggle, waiting for a skink to come past, waiting for a bird to land there, and then bang. The food would try and eat his tail as food, bang, they turn into food the opposite way around. Something even funnier, if you guys have ever thought of or bought snake deterrents, have a look at this clip. <laughs> This snake is one metre away from a snake repeller. I was, I was trying to catch the snake and I hear beep, beep, and I'm like, what is that? And I turn around, I'm like, no way, you've got to be kidding me. So I had to get the clip of the snake next to the repeller. How ridiculous. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a look at this habitat before we get the snake out of the bag. So if you have a look at the ground here, you can see how well this snake, not only the red types, but also the grey types, how well they would blend into this ground here. Now I've had to come a little bit of a distance from where I caught this snake. I am on the same ridge line, but I am away from the houses. This is a very popular spot for death adders and it makes my blood boil. You know how passionate I am about these animals, any of our wildlife. And I have seen videos of people coming up here with rakes, raking the ground, disturbing habitat in order to, look, I don't know that they post it, but I'm taking this snake well away from the place where people come potentially to post these animals. Cause that is disgusting. They deserve life in prison. I could go on about that all day, but top of my head will blow off because nothing makes me more angry. These snakes deserve to be wild and free. Anyway, let's get this snake out of the bag. I've come down a little offshoot track here and you can see all this leaf litter here, all this surround. This snake will be able to just disappear into that, but enough waffling, let's have a look at him. Let's try and get a nice little flat patch of ground here where we can look at him and we'll send him into the bit where he can hide, get away from the trails and any people or dogs that are gonna be coming past. Now it's an extremely warm day here in Sydney. So he was very, very sprightly when I caught him. As soon as he knew I was there, he didn't want to stay still, but let's see how he's gonna operate now. Oh, he is a stunning, stunning snake. He's only a small individual. I've only had one death adder on the channel previously and he was a he was a big boy, he was a stonker. Where are you buddy? Certainly a little fella. <laughs> Did you see him wiggling there? He's on fire. He's not gonna wanna hang around at all. Just while he's half out of the bag there, we can have a closer look at his caudal lure. So there it is, you can see the tip of it. And that's what he'll wiggle around right in front of his mouth and tricks his prey items into essentially ending up in his mouth. And there he is there, our stunning red-faced common death adder. And he's on the move, he does not want to hang around. Can we have a look at you, buddy? Now he doesn't really want to hang around and let us have a look at him, which is completely fair enough. I plonked him out of his uh, out of his home. Now he is very, very active for a death adder. I haven't had one this active before. As you can probably guess, they can go undetected in your backyard for quite a long period of time. Look at the colours and patterns on him. As soon as he's in the scrub, especially the bush and the leaf litter up here, which matches his patterning, He's invisible. He is an invisible snake. Like I said before, these snakes actually come in two variations. This beautiful red and also a grey. This red variation is actually one that many people want to see. But I'll be completely honest, it's the only one I've seen. I have not had the pleasure of stumbling across a grey death adder just yet. I think I've come across four 
maybe four to six death adders in this area and every single one has had this beautiful red orange patterning isn't that just a stunning stunning snake they are so unique with the big head the lure on the tail they are just a stunning stunning animal and you can see how placid this individual is our australian snakes our venomous snakes they don't want anything to do with us they just want to keep going on their way i don't pose any threat to him right now and he knows that He's out of the bag. He's seen that I haven't done anything to hurt him and he's completely calmed down. He was a bit weary coming out of the bag, but so would I be if a big giant shoved me in a bag and took me for a drive. I wouldn't be too happy either. This is without a doubt the most active death adder I've come across. Like I said, I think even in my one death adder video I've got out on the channel, he just coils up in a ball. This guy's just quite happy moving around, trying to get away. Yeah, I don't want to hold him up any longer, so uh, we'll probably move him on away from the trail. So what we are going to do now is send our little mate here off into the scrub. I'll switch to my camera phone. My camera phone, what is this, 2001? my iPhone so I can zoom in and we can watch him move away and disappear into the leaf litter. All right, buddy, we want you going the opposite way. You disappear down into there, away from the trail and away from people. He's just so active. He's coming back towards me. I've never seen anything like it. Not with a death adder. Let him just suss me out. Go the other way, buddy. You want to come back to me. You want to be friends. We can be friends, but you can't come with me. See how close he is to me. Oh, he's coming back under me bag, is he? Oh, I don't know about that one, buddy. Oh, you're a bit close now. Look at that. That was incredible. Chased by a snake. <clears throat> Full of it. Oh, this is an incredible experience. This is this is probably one of the best. Move. This is probably one of the best snake experiences I've ever had. This guy is just unbelievable. He would have crawled over my leg right now. If I wasn't deep in the bush on my own, I would probably coil him up in my hand and he would not be bothered in the slightest, I don't think. He's going back up towards the fire trail. I don't want that though. Put him back into this clump of debris here. Any other snake would just coil up underneath and amongst it, but he's just on the move. Maybe I'll just need to let him do his thing. He's going to go through my legs here. Keep going, please. How would you feel about that, eh? Now, he is extremely active and he's not going to go into hiding as much as I want him to. I'd prefer him to go into hiding, hide from predators for the rest of the day so he doesn't get picked up by a bird or anything along those lines. But he just wants to keep moving, so bugger it. I'll let him keep doing his thing. See if we can still spot our friend. There he is there. Off he goes. Would just be so impossible to spot if you were trying to find him. This is my problem. I get so fixated on a snake. I just want to lay with it all day. Lay with it and watch with it. They're just such incredible animals. And when it is a snake like this, more of a slower moving snake, well, I actually have the opportunity to hang around. It's not a red belly or a brown snake that I dump out of the bag and it goes, Woof! Oh, this guy's beautiful. He's going to follow me home, I think. I think he's my new mate. All righty. He is now in this grass tuff. He'll probably pop straight back out, but I'm going to get me bag, make sure I don't step on him on the way out, and we'll either see you guys tonight or at the next cap slash rescue, and I'll see you there. I lied, I'm back. So the other problem with this particular spot, I mean, you see so many... Whoa, you see so many posts on Facebook up in this particular area. There's death adder in my yard. There's a death adder in my yard. And you still see the knobs that write, oh, you just shove it. It just blows my mind that out here, you've chosen to live in the bush. You've chosen to be surrounded by bush. They still have that mindset when we've come in and taken their land, taken their habitat, it makes zero sense. 
especially with a slug like that. A slug like that, which that's not going to hurt you. It's easy enough to leave B, keep eyes on it for half an hour, call a snake catcher till they arrive. This suburb is just surrounded by bushland. It is prime, prime habitat. Diamond pythons, death adders, tree snakes, pink tongue skinks actually. It's a stunning piece of the world. And it is good the way I took this snake along the ridge line to get back to houses, it would have to go one specific way and it would end up at the first house. If I went the other way on the ridge, it'd be able to head back and it'd just be in people's backyards and then it would end up under a shovel or in the mouth of a dog. And we don't want that. We want the best outcome possible. Same habitat, same area. And that's what we've got. And our death adder is happy and home and extremely active. Might be a hungry boy, but yeah. All right, well, let's keep going. I'll stop blabbing. We're back. It's been about a week since our death adder catch and release. And today, today and tomorrow, I've got a few releases to do and that should get us to the end of the video. But today we have tough as bloody buggery, Eastern blue tongue lizard. Look at this fella. Look at that. So Eastern blue tongue skink. This guy is extremely, extremely lucky. He was crossing the road, just up the road here. Not myself, but another wildlife volunteer from the area saw him crossing the road. She stopped her car, pulled over, ran back to him, and then someone clipped him. Luckily, uh, you guys know how angry that makes me. But anyway, luckily the car just clicked him on the snout. They obviously didn't stop. And Lily, the wildlife carer, grabbed him off the road and he was looking a little bit worse for wear. He was a bit down, he was a bit flat and lethargic. She could see there was injury and blood in his mouth, but nothing too major. So she dropped him off at the vet. We got him some antibiotics and then I was able to pick him up, give him his injections. He didn't even need much nursing back to health. Like, look at this lizard. He does have a cut on his tongue, but you can barely even see it now. There's a little bit of a nick. Maybe if I pause the GoPro video, we may be able to see it. Yeah, I'll pause one of those clips and it's just sort of a bit ridgy, bit like agitated now, but he, that's not, a, not the right word. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. But he's flicking it, he's eating, he's drinking, he's doing everything he needs. The other thing about this lizard, have a look at that. Missing his front left arm. This is extremely common in our blue tongue lizards. They lose digits, arms, legs, tails. This guy's actually got his full original tail, which is interesting, but he's missing an arm. And that just heals over on its own in the wild. Like This is how resilient these guys are. Imagine we just got our arm chopped off or pulled off for some reason. We're like, yeah, don't need any hospital visit. It'll be fine. Losing an arm like that, it actually causes, it, it's honestly like it causes no issues. Like I'll put it down to show you. You wouldn't even know. Look at this. Hey, we want to say a proper goodbye, but look at that. <laughs> they just move like nothing's even wrong. I've seen them in the wild, like missing all their legs and they sort of just move, traverse through the bush like a snake, essentially. Yeah, very, very incredible. <laughs> And we're at a beautiful spot here, not far from where he's from. We've got all these fallen logs here, which is going to be fantastic for him to make home for the night the next day or so. Imagine how many bugs and snails are under here. He's going to have an absolute feast and hopefully he'll stay off the road. So without further ado, let's send him on his way. And away he goes. Look at that. See ya, buddy. And well done. <laughs> Look at him there. Aren't they so cool? Now, hang around because you guys saw how big that lizard was. It was sort of fingers to halfway up my arm. I have a fresh, fresh baby blue tongue at home. It's literally like that. He's adorable. He would have been a day or two old. And this guy, I was actually picked up by a cat. He was in the cat's mouth. He's got a little bit of damage on his head, but he's made it. He has made it. That's how tough these guys are. So I will. I'll see you in the morning with our little blue tongue. Jesus, excuse me. <laughs> Where are we? Dying. Um, so we are back out. It's the next day. We're back out at my local park. It's literally like 200 meters from my house. Couldn't get any better than that. Don't have to leave the area. I want you to have a think for a moment. I told you guys to remember how big the blue tongue was yesterday. Oh. Hey, how about those reflexes, eh? Yeah, I wanted you to think about how big that blue tongue was yesterday. It was probably, probably something like that. Now have a look at this. Now this is not something you see every day. 
very seldomly, to be honest. Look at that. A little baby Eastern Blue Tongue Skink. And how adorable is he? So I have had this guy in care for a little bit over a week. He had a bit of a rough start to life. Unfortunately, he popped out of his mum. So Eastern Blue Tongue Skinks don't actually lay eggs. They give live birth. So they come out fully developed. I don't know the exact number, but they can have up to like 15 or 16 young. And the mum carries those around. It's just absolutely incredible. And they come out like this, fully formed, fully developed. Straight away, they just got to fend for themselves. The parents don't have to look after them. They'll all hang around together for a day or two, and then they all start to disperse and go on their own ways. And aren't they bloody awesome? At this size, the colors are so vivid and vibrant. Sometimes the babies, the little yellowy oranges on the sides there, they are vivid. They are extremely bright. I keep forgetting how small he is. I'm probably holding him too far away from the camera. Now out here, literally everything is gonna be a predator for these guys. Snakes, birds, adult blue tongues, young, not even young, any goannas, literally every single thing, cats. How could I forget cats? This is the reason this guy is with me, because of a cat. This guy popped out of his mum in a suburban backyard around here and unfortunately he had his cat outside and his cat come back walking to him with this guy in his mouth absolutely extraordinary that this guy was able to survive the cat. I'll see if I can get a bit of a close-up. On the top of his head, it's very hard to see. So it's not the divot in the middle of the head, that's the perennial eye. But back behind that, you can see a couple little damaged scales, and that's just where the microscopic or the tiny, tiny cat's teeth bit into his skull. And thankfully didn't puncture into the brain or any other body parts. This guy got away with it scot-free. We were lucky enough to get antibiotics straight into him and he survived it. Absolutely phenomenal and outstanding for cat attacks. Sometimes even with antibiotics, an animal this size doesn't stand a chance with the bacteria of a cat's mouth and claws. Even if an animal gets scratched by a cat, those cats are forever grooming, so that bacteria is on their claws as well. So I mentioned the parietal, I probably said it wrong, but the parietal eye just before. It's that little thing on the top of the head. It's not an eye they can see out of, but it essentially regulates the circadian rhythm and hormone production for thermoregulation. So yeah, super interesting. That's honestly something incredibly amazing in animals that is a bit too scientific for me to go into. So make sure you look that up. Okay, so the release went well, however, I only filmed it on my phone that way because I was trying to get a little Instagram clip. But essentially, essentially, I sent him in under here, in under this hole. So I'll put the clip in anyway, I don't know how good it will look. But he shot straight back up and he's gone under here. So I'm going to have to be very careful where I step. But it just shows how well the modelled patterns and the different colourings on the blue tongues. Look at how well all this leaf litter, the different colours on the leaf litter, it matches these lizards to an absolute T. That's why even the big ones go completely undetected sometimes. Sometimes the only way to spot them or see them is to sit around and listen out. But a little fella that size, you're not going to be able to hear him. I guess that is how these guys do survive, especially at that size. They'll just traverse under all this. Because as soon as they came out on top of that, that's going to expose them to the birds. If he was crawling along here, a bird would just smash him straight back up. Which I mean, these guys being so small, essentially they are a prey item. That would be a good reason why the parents have bloody 10, 15, 20, 25 babies. Because they're a yummy food source and a few are going to get picked off, unfortunately. That's the way the world goes around. All the animals in the animal kingdom need to eat and that's the way it goes. That's probably it for this video, guys. Hopefully that was a good little variation. We got to see that stunning death adder and two very different sizes of eastern blue tongue lizards. That feels good. One successful catch and two successful rescue rehab releases. Thanks for tagging along and I'll see you next week. Let's go.